Hello, and welcome back to Code Weaver Plays Games. Looks like my audio is working pretty good. I'll double check that when the game actually starts. You know, I try to figure out how to keep these intros and outros from becoming clones of all the other wonderful streamers out there that I absolutely uh, love. Um, Playframe, for example, absolutely delightful. Um, Lore Explorer, and, uh, and of course, uh, the... Uh, ubiquitous Markiplier, but uh, I, I apologize if I ever sound like them. I, I, homage, uh, imitation is best form of flattery, whatever. Let's just get on with this. I've decided to play uh, FTL. Uh, I'm only going to do one pass through this, and if I die, I die. That's fine. I probably will. Um, so let's just switch right over to that. Hopefully. With some luck, it's going to be this one. This stream right here. All right, there we go. So this is FTL Captain's Edition. Um, so uh, I already did uh, a stream a while back uh, playing through FTL. I think that made it to my YouTube channel. And uh, because that's where I archive everything. The Captain's Edition is actually a fan mod to the original game. The fan uh, was so uh, delighted by this game that they uh, just expanded the number of ships and weapons and things you could do in the game, like uh, different story elements and plots um, and uh, just complete overhaul um, as sort of a gift to the community. You can go get it as long as you have the baseline FTL. You can go and get the Captain's Edition and install it. And um, I, I loved the base game. I thought it was great, uh, great roguelike. Um, even though, to be fair, I, uh, I did manage to uh, find where the save files were and sort of de facto disable the pure roguelike elements of this. I'm not above doing that. I beat the thing normally a couple of times, at least on easy mode and once on normal. Uh, I find the game really hard. I'm not necessarily that good at it. Um, but I absolutely adore the game. Uh, for those of you who are, uh, are uh, roguelike purists, still very very good game to pick up it uh it uh, its style uh holds its own the captain's edition just adds more just more and more and more and uh it's gone through several revisions i think it stopped being developed in 2018 or 2019 but that's okay because it it, it just lots and lots of good stuff let's get right on into this i love the original game i'm going to play this in its purest form i'm going to be playing on easy mode because i'm not insane um and uh, because I normal, I have to be really on my game um, and and super, super understanding all the balancing of all the items uh, in the game and the way they interact with uh, uh, during combats and all that. I'm just not that good. Uh, so I'm going to stick with easy. And if I do well, maybe I'll do normal another time. I'd rather do easy on a bunch of different ships and give you a feel for the game than anything else. For those of you who are just um, getting involved in uh, FTL or they, they might want to get involved in FTL. And for those of you who haven't played Captain's Edition yet. So, um, I've got a bunch of stuff not unlocked because, unfortunately, for some reason, Steam did not preserve... Um, <clears throat> did not preserve uh, my basically unlocking everything. It has lost my uh, status. This has nothing to do with the Captain's Edition. Um, I, I don't know why. It just lost my, it corrupted my uh, my status uh, for getting through the game. So we're just going to be playing with the, I mean, we can play with any of these. I don't think they're locked out. I just don't have any of the additional layouts or anything like that. Um, I'll just play with Kestrel. Uh, so the dual laser might have been stock, I don't remember, but the, the, uh, the Captain's Edition uh, also has new weaponry, and so the Periton Missile Launcher, outdated missile design allows two projectiles for the cost of one. I don't remember if this is stack, uh, stock or not. I'm not going to be able to determine that. FTL Fuel Recycler. Creates a small amount of FTL fuel by recycling spent fuel cells. Requ um, requires an empty beacon. Production augment. All right. We're just going to hit start. So. The day you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. Uh, you'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure you explore each sector before moving on to the next, but get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. Tip, anomalies. These rare, unexplainable hazards will jam your sensors, drone communication, and weapons targeting. 
So this is, I believe, not stock. You prefer, prepare the ship for the FTL jump. Socialize with your crew while the FTL charges. Consider some upgrades to your custom ship equipment. Produce something on board the ship or continue. I believe two and three actually require a fair bit of scrap, but let's start with the socialize with the crew. <clears throat> Take a walk around the ship and see what you can find. Um, I'm going to have a word with my humanoid crew member, number one. Your humanoid crew member is prejudiced against the mantis. All right, well, a little bit of lore, uh, but uh, there will be more things to discover as we do that. Uh, you can get interesting little bits of uh, lore and history, and things will happen in the game that differ from the stock game. So let's make sure those are powered up. I can power them both on by default. I'm okay with everybody uh, currently being situated where actually, hmm, I'm actually going to get Kaless. That's hilarious uh, as a name. Uh, to not be in the engines, I'm going to put them in the shields. I want shields to come back just a little bit faster. Uh, I think I'm good with that. Personal preference. Um, so I'm going to ignore the store. This part of the game is more or less standard. Right. Once you arrive, your screen lights up with warnings. A nearby pirate seems to have advanced hacking tools, and they've tried to shut down our engines, which I'm not paying attention to which is fine. Your crew manages to keep them barely operational. You move into attack. We are definitely going to continue. Uh, what am I going to do here? Uh, I, my weapons do not power up as long as they're cloaked, so that's of no use specifically. But now they are powering up. And I'm not getting any audio from the game. Isn't that interesting? Why is that, do you think? Uh, options. Uh, sound volume is high. So this has failed for reasons I can't explain. We're quickly going to quit out of the game and pop right back in. Uh, let's just check to see whether or not I have audio coming through. Yes, I do. Audio is coming through. Uh, we're going to quickly relaunch the game. Doing this on the fly because I'm not going to restart the stream this time around. Uh, unable to sync. That's fine. Play anyway. There we go. Now we have it. So continue on. Okay. Uh, we're being shot at, so that's a thing. Uh, and they've taken out oxygen. Um, I'm going to leave that for the minute because I think I can stand to lose a little oxygen while I figure this out. So the dual laser 2, uh, shots per charge is 2, possible effect is fire. We're definitely going to take out their cloaking device so they can't do that. And we're going to fire the missile at the uh at their weapons and i'm going to turn on auto fire because uh i'm not not really feeling like i'm in a micromanaging state yet. so uh all right so one of the weapons has come down we're going to preserve our missiles by turning them off we're going to retarget them with a laser and actually let since they're both down now let's retarget their oxygen and while I'm doing that, let's get the O2 repaired. There we go. Well, it took a bit of a punch, but that's okay. With the pirate ship destroyed, your ship systems is restored to full functionality. You salvage what you can from the debris. Great. Now, figuring out my hotkeys here. Enter is to return crew to save positions. Slash is to save, so I'm going to make sure I keep those definitely separate. Because I'll probably want to hotkey that. And we also have uh, open all the doors, close all the doors, or X, so Z and X could be useful, although I probably won't want to open all the doors. That would seem a little bit extreme. Let's make another jump. Now, of course, uh, for those who haven't played FTL before, uh, even in the stock game, the basic premise is to keep ahead of the advancing rebel sheep by sh rebel sheep, rebel fleet by hopping from system to system um, and uh, you want to hit as many uh, systems as you can to gather resources or have experiences before you leave the sector but you don't want to get caught by the advancing wave so there's a balance there and you can only really see what's in a system if you have foreknowledge from an event um, that tells you information or you can generally see what's going on in the next system ahead of you next systems ahead of you um, but no further typically 
Uh, the distress beacon is coming from a civilian ship. It appears it is being chased by a parrot. Well, we'll aid the civilian ship. This is a pretty common occurrence. Um, some of these ship designs, by the way, there are lots of ships that have been added to the sh ship types that you encounter, which is very cool. That's a nice expansion. Uh, you power up your weapons and engage the pirate ship. That's fine. So we are going to target... Uh, we're going to target the shields... Uh, uh, how do I want to do this? I'm going to target the shields with the lasers, because the first laser is going to get through the shields, and hopefully if both of them hit, the second one will take out the shields, at which point I want the missiles to quickly take out the weapons, because I don't want to get hit. Um, it's damage that I have to pay to repair, so... I do have to balance not spending my missiles on things, though. Okay, good. That worked. Let's let the missiles hit. Right. But then we're going to turn off the missiles and retarget the weapons, uh, retarget the lasers. I may not need to do that. I uh, Yes, I do. Um, okay, so the sh I'm going to keep firing to reduce the weapons down to nothing. Now, since the enemy is uh, here, uh, no weapons are available. They'll have to repair that before they get anywhere uh, with the weapons. Um, and this shield is down enough that the shields aren't going to come back until they repair it. Um, so I'm safe to go and repair this hole in my hull. Which is leaking oxygen. The sh pirate ship breaks apart. You hasten to con contact the civilian ship. Contact the civilian ship. Apparently the ship that was being assaulted was a science vessel that thank you for coming and saving them and offer a small reward. So I'm gathering scrap, which is the economy, and it's your ability to repair your uh, repair your ship, although you can't repair your ship on the fly, except for what my character's doing. That fixes holes and the like, but the permanent damage to the ship I have to get done at a station. Um, and that takes scrap. Everything is the economy of scrap and general trade goods. We also have uh, missiles, fuel, which we need to keep the ship moving forward. And, uh, and drone parts if we had a drone system. Low oxygen room, let's get him out of there. Unhealthy, let's get him to the healing lab. The, the healing sick bay, thank you, I can, I, I can speak words. <laughs> I can words today. All right, well, let's uh, let them heal up before we advance. No, I'm going through stuff a lot of people have already stated, obviously. Now, I could go to the store and buy stuff, and we will be visiting stores. The reason I'm not now is that as long as I don't need to repair or get fuel or have, like, limited resources that I can't get any other way, doing it by way of hopping forward through the systems gives me a greater chance of finding story elements that are interesting. So, my choices of jumps. At the moment... Since I don't know what's in the um, the future systems, any system as good as any other, um, without any knowledge, uh, without uh, my having any other knowledge, and so I want to choose the one that gives me the most interesting ways to advance. I've got to stay ahead of these guys, so I could jump to here. I'm going to jump to here instead um, because I think what I want to do is get into this area a little sooner and wave my way up through here. I doesn't really matter because story can occur anywhere. You arrive to find out what appears to be a colonized moon. However, scans show it has been abandoned. You also detect an abandoned space station near the beacon. Do I stay near the beacon, or do I move in and examine the station? Examine the station! You dock with the station to take a look inside. However, no sooner do you open up the airlock than pirates burst in. Meanwhile, scanners pick up a previously undetected pirate ship moving in to attack. Well, I'm going to continue, but there are intruders on board. So now i got to deal with the intruders. I haven't upgraded my ship to allow for locked doors. So I've got to be at least slightly careful how I do this. Um, what I'm going to do, because they're going to move into the first available room with a system in it and try to disrupt it. I'm going to force them to go to the medical bay. Where I can get healed and they can't. Hopefully, they'll go to the medical bay. Okay, get everybody in here. Now, they, I'm taking damage while we are in oxygen deprivation environment as well. But if I'm really careful... So... 
Okay. Let's get me into the medical bay. I did not mean to uh, devoid that of oxygen. Let's get in here. So that I can be healed. The oxygen is still on, so this will eventually replenish. The healing is still on, so that I am going to be healing even though the oxygen is in trouble. And I did manage to kill one of them through oxygen deprivation. And I'm going to make sure that door opens so that I chase them. Can I not open that door? That's interesting. Okay, they may get some damage in on me while I'm trying to figure out why that's happening. Uh, can I force all the doors open? No, because the doors have been damaged, that's why. Okay. Okay. I need to be careful about not using too many missiles. Their shields are down enough that their one shield uh, pip has been disabled. So I'm going to focus on... Okay, so their weapons are temporarily offline. Let's... Oh, you have... They bailed. They teleported back. And that's fine, because at least it got them off my ship. They did the damage that they wanted to do. Close all doors in the ship. Get the oxygen back, get these guys back into healing. Okay. So they're being healed. My system's operating not at peak efficiency because my crew members are not in position. But that's fine. Let's get them back to their system. Shields and weapons should be a little bit more efficient now. And I'm oscillating my laser fire between uh, weapons and shields so that I can... See, that's the problem, is now their shields are back up, and eventually they'll be able to get their uh, their weapons back up. So what do I want to do here? I'm going to send my missiles in here. So they offer you some cargo if you let them live. Here's the consequence. If I let them uh, live, I'm going to get less scrap, but I'm going to get other items that I need. If I destroy them, I'm pretty much only going to get scrap. Um, scrap is super valuable for upgrading my ship. Uh, as are drone parts. Um, but the quite but fuel is also super valuable and I'm always running out of fuel late in the game I'm going to take their offer and you open up the airlocks and take the reparation supplies aboard your opponent is glad to still be alive um, yep honor your truce and let the enemy leave open fire on your defeated opponent I'm gonna take uh, I could probably get more resources out of this by destroying them I'm not gonna be a colossal jerk um, I know that's more lore and story driven than it is playing the roguelike optimally for whatever that means. I don't know if there are any consequences that the uh, mod developer has uh, based on this. It's quite possible because um, some of the stories are more interlinked in this. Uh, I'm going to honor the truth and let them leave. All right. So that's fine. Let's do a jump. We got some good resources out of that. Let's just... So I want to stay ahead of this. I don't want to be just hugging the edge of the uh, the advancing um, the advancing wave because if there is a quest or something I do need to get uh, to I need a little bit of buffer zone that's about one maybe two jumps difference and I want to have a little bit more leeway so I'm going to leap over to this one. Mattis Military Scout seems to have just finished a salvage op in a nearby wreck. They have no time to waste with warnings and uh, uh, wish to appear to or appear to wish to fight. Well, we're okay. We're going to give them a good fight then. So shields there. Um, and if those succeed, then I don't have to spend missiles fire, uh, firing on their weaponry. Maybe. Because I only have five missiles. Okay. So I'm going to preserve the missiles and switch my lasers over. When I have an abundance of missiles, I'll change my strategy on that. Oh, you are obnoxious. 
Uh, because you took out one of my, uh, you damaged my weapons, which reduced my maximum power, which means I can't have both my systems online. But that's okay. Um, here we go. Dual laser. Take out the shields. I'm going to keep taking out the shields. Because if I hit with both of these, they're going to get destroyed anyway. There we go. The violent streak of this group of mantis has been brought to an end in the form of an equally violent explosion throughout their ship. Continue. All right, so we got, again, some good resources. Now, one of the things I can do is I can actually go and make some in situ modifications to my ship. And I'm tempted, but what I want to do is I do want to get to a um, store at some point and see what I can buy. And I have to use scrap for that as well as I have to use scrap for some of the stuff I can build in situ. So I want to make sure... It's a balancing act. If I don't have any uh, resources when I get to the store, I can't buy anything. All right. Okay, we've got a little bit of leeway now. You can see how much they advanced. And compared to where I was, you can see that, yes, I didn't actually have two jumps worth. I only had about a jump. So they, they, uh, they move pretty quickly. Now, my path could take me through here, or it could take me over here. You can see some of these don't connect to very many others. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these. If I get here and I still have a little leeway, I can come back. I think that's the way I'm going to handle this. Okay. The nearby planet shows the signs of habitation and great beauty. A rudimentary automated planetary defense system is looping its message into space. Warning. Quarantine level 5. In effect, under FHA Act 22, Article 11.2. Warning. Quarantine level 5. Uh, that's fine. Um, we can socialize while the FTL charges, consider some upgrades, produce something on board the ship, or continue. Um, I want to keep uh, socializing with the crew to find out if I can tease out any more story stuff. But maybe what I should do, consider upgrades to your ship, custom ship equipment. Um, all right, let's try two. Deep within the belly of the ship, you consult the blueprints and think about what improvements can be made. Customizing the cruiser this way will take more time than the usual standardized upgrades. Right. You consider our options. Ammo-consuming weapon. Figure out a way to produce ammo on board the ship. Scrap minus 30. Augment ammo manufacturer. That Okay, so using this new feature for the Captain's Edition, one, um, I, can, uh, I can research this. I can spend scrap on it, and I get a funky custom thing for the ship. I am going to do this. <clears throat> it does increase fleet pursuit but now i have this funky augment ammo, ammo manufacturer which means now i can probably um i can probably start relying more on uh missiles which is interesting because they can often get through shields uh right which means easier to take ships down well, with all these ships' parts on uh, hand, I guess I could. Yes, I think it will work. They need managed drop plans for a makeshift at Brass. Now, these may fail to produce. So I'm kind of lucky in that sense. So let's go take a look at what this actually does. So, enables cost-efficient production of missiles on board the ship. Requires an empty beacon. Uh, production augment. Okay, so this is, a, I guess, a particular kind of augment, and it means that I have to be in a place where nothing else is happening, but then I can make missiles when I run out. I don't get them magically, but that's pretty cool. All right, let's advance. Continue on our merry way. You jump into a field of debris. It appears a battle recently took place here, and the loser seems to have been a civilian ship. A message was left on repeat before it was destroyed. Rebels attacking, please send aid. The responsible rebels are likely steer still nearby. We are totally going looking. You spend some time looking around, but your scanners cannot pick up any trace. Now, I would have needed an upgraded scanner, probably, to uh, engage in that. And I have not upgraded my scanner. So, if that quest had happened later on in the game, I'd probably be able to accept it. But it showed up here, and I have not yet upgraded. So, All right. Let's keep this in motion. Now, I spent some extra time uh, uh, doing that that uh, ammo upgrade, so these guys have advanced faster than I thought they would. So I may skip over to this one and see where that leaves me. So I go here and then here. That one might get eaten up. And if it isn't, I can go to it. And if it is, I'll just leap to the exit. 
So very careful balancing of my path so that I can explore but still make it out of the system. Senses go wild as a nearby pulsar is detected. While you are attempting to recalibrate the FTL drive, a pirate sneaks up in your ship, weapons charging. Prepare for a fight. All right. Uh, let's get, bring my missiles back online. Uh, all right. So let's take advantage of the fact that we can produce missiles. Oh, intruders detected. I think we might want, might want to upgrade the doors. So he's going to attempt to take on my oxygen supply. So let's get you in there. And let's actually try to shake you out of there. Now they're good fighters, so I've got to keep a very careful eye. On my character. Yeah, get them out of there right now. Uh, right, let's switch off the missiles, focus on shields. Still don't want to waste weapons, especially, check that out, I can, I can acquire, um, I can acquire missiles right now if I choose. But let's see what happens when I do not accept surrender, because that's worth, uh, worth checking out. Okay, so they're trying to take on my missiles, I'm going to send my shield guy over there to forestall that being a thing. And I'm gonna bring my next character. Huh. One moment, I just have to check. I thought for a moment I was getting a phone call. Yes, not. All right. The treachery and thievery of this crew are over as their ship explodes. Spoils of their career, yours for the taking. Um, so I got more scrap out of it. I still got a missile, um, and I still got a drone, but I did get slightly more scrap out of it, twice as much as I would have got. All right, so I'm going to get my, uh, my crew member out of there and bring the new crew member in. And I am going to close all the doors of the ship. Okay, so here we go. Get everybody healed up. Okay. And let's make our jump to the next unvisited location. Now, based on their advancement, um, that one is probably actually probably going to be free. I might get at least one, if not two more connections before I have to escape the system. The distress beacon is coming from a civilian ship. It appears it is being chased by a pirate. Aid to the civilian ship. Power up your weapons and engage the pirate ship. Okay. Uh, now this is a problem because they have uh, mentally taken over one of my characters and that's not good. So we are going to try to take down the shields, but we're going to target, uh, maybe we'll get that second. But in the, at the moment, they're actually going to try to hurt each other, which is kind of problematic. Let's switch the lasers over to that mind control device, because that's a serious problem. Let's get both of these guys back into health. All right, so lasers on shields. They can't take me over anymore. I do have to repair that oxygen supply uh, room, but that's gonna be a little tricky. Oh, I forgot to turn off my missiles, but that's okay. I gotta be careful here because not only, uh, not only, that is not uh, my phone telling me 
interestingly enough. Oh, the vagaries of having a semi-real life while trying to do a stream. Just a midday warning alarm for me for no particular reason. Sorry about that, folks. Let's get right back into this, and I don't have something distracting me from beyond my headphones. The pirate ship breaks apart, hasten to contact the civilian. So I got some fuel, which is good, um, and uh, some drones, which may become useful later, plus some decent scrap. Contact the civilian ship. It seems the crew did not survive the assault. You take what you can from the remains of the ship. We got some more of everything. All right, so let's get this uh, repaired. Now, the problem here, obviously, is I have to repair it while... Uh, I have no oxygen, which means my characters are getting damaged as they're doing repairs, but that's okay. I got them both in there doing the repairs, so uh, I didn't have to do any complicated cycling of characters to keep them all alive. Now, the captain is also slightly hurt, so let's uh, get him in there. Or her. Don't really know. Uh, and don't really care. Right, so let's do a jump. Yeah, so I can get to here. I might not be able to get to here, but it won't matter. Because as long as I'm leaving a system, it doesn't matter if they overtake me. I just can't arrive in a system. Or um, stay in a system that has bad guys. Alright, upon completing your jump, you receive a message from a nearby ship. Greetings and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we'll let you continue on your way. I don't think so. So... Uh, let's fire up the old weapons. Oh, I'm paused. Let's fire up the old weapons. Everyone's in good shape. Boy, it would be nice if we could get more crew. It's another thing. It would be nice to get crew. Now, it's always the question, do you wait for stuff to happen? Okay. Kind of want to make sure they can't fire on me. So let's... More lasers there, and then we'll redirect the lasers to shields. Um... Here we go. You have made your point. We're beaten. Take these and leave us to our shame. Now, um, accepting your offer is very valuable here because not only do we get a pile of stuff, which is great, but we also get the Ion, Bl Ion Blast Mark II, which is a weapon, which we can either sell if we don't need it, uh, which it just means more scrap, um, or uh, we might actually be able to use it. Uh, exchange of goods goes without problems, and we could open fire or honor a truce. I, again... It's clearly not how you would uh, maximize out a roguelike, but I'm going to honor the truce and let the enemy leave. Uh, that will probably come back to haunt me when I die horribly, but that's the way I roll. So let's check out this Ion Blast. Now, it takes three units of power to power, um, which I do not have uh, the capability of doing without shutting down my other weapons. Uh, but... Uh, that it's also an Ion Blast 2, which means it's a second upgrade in a series, which means it's probably pretty good. The shots per charge is 1, its ion damage is only 1, and it's a possible effect is to stun characters that are in the room, which could be useful because then they're not doing other things. I'm hoping... Oh, actually, one of the reasons why it's an advanced one is because its recharge time is short. So, um, if I can power that, it will be a major advantage because I can... Pound at the shields uh, to slowly disable them. I can pound at systems to temporarily disable them. It's a great auxiliary weapon, and a variety of weapons is good. Now, um, do I want to activate that now? I'm going to do it more or less just before, or maybe just after I arrive in the new system. Um, oh, you see, now I can't get to this one. They overtook it. Uh, if I went here... Uh, I'm pretty sure that means that I would... Uh, I, I don't know what happens in the Captain's Edition, but I, in the basic game, that would mean I would encounter the sort of uh, pilot fish force, the advance force for the Rev, uh, for the uh, uh, Federation coming and... Uh, or sorry, the Rebels coming and trying to get to me. Um, and that's bad. I really don't want to be anywhere behind here. Um, yeah, we should just exit. So, 
Uh, your cruiser arrives at a busy long range relay. So, you come across a large trade station. However, as soon as you approach, a warning goes out to all ships in the region. Do not associate. We do not associate with the Federation sympathizer. All who oppose the rebels will be punished. Uh, we search among the stores to see if someone sells to you or leave. Let's search. You apparently spoke to the wrong person when you search for a store. Warnings go off and you detect an automated rebel ship moving into attack. All right. Well, this is where we just do our thing. Let's do our thing. Okay, now they have done a hacking attempt, so they've taken out my engines, but I'm not really geared around using my engines on this particular ship, so that's fine. All right, disable or uh, take out the use of the missiles. Uh, yeah, the AP AI craft sends this mantra again. This is an automated message. Re resisting our takeover is pointless. Prepare to die. Um, that's fine. I will continue to go after the shields and then after the hacking and i guess after that i'll go after the steering why not should be able to just take it out yep another automated ship is sent to the scrapyard as it breaks apart you salvage what looks usable from its remains before pressing onwards okay you notice i'm running out of missiles though so that's kind of a thing I'm going to have to go with. Next sector. So Uncharted Sector Row 2 or Black Tentacle Fort. I have no idea what these necessarily mean. So eh, let's go to Black Tentacle Fort. See if that has any interesting story elements. All right. Bands of light slowly swirl past the vid screen while your ship accelerates in hyperspace. You consider your options. Basic engines travel at minimum FTL speed to the next sector. Use only emergency fuel. Um, standard engines travel at standard FTL speed to the next sector using the usual amount of fuel. Uh, I'm going to go with standard engines because I have a fair bit of fuel. Intel suggests that the Rebel fleet will be unable to move any faster than at standard speed. They can't outrun you, but you also won't be able to get ahead of them without expending more fuel. Okay. A few years ago, this region was bustling with trade activity. Now it is overrun with bandits and marauders. You should tread lightly here. You prepare to head into the sector, socialize with your crew, consider some upgrades, or produce something on board the ship. I kind of want to produce more missiles. So, ammo manufacturer, assemble some missiles while you wait for the FTL to charge. And we have that FTL fuel recycler. We could recycle some FTL fuel cells. So if we got into trouble with fuel, this particular uh, tool allows us to get some for essentially time. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna manufacture nine missiles at the cost of twenty scrap. Um, that's probably uh, better than, or at least as good as I could pay for them um, at a uh, uh, at a shop. So this is actually good. It does cost time to do that. All right. So let's try upgrading a few of our systems. What I want to do first of all is I want to get my doors upgraded. So that if anybody gets on board, I can lock them into a room okay. Uh, blast doors, and uh, improved blast doors and super blast doors. So I can lock the doors so that I can uh, impede intruder movement. The other thing I want to do is see if I can bring the uh, that other weapon online. But that's going to take 140, 215 scrap. And anything shy of that is going to be insufficient. Um, because I need to do t actually, and it's more than that. Because not only do I have to upgrade the system, but I have to upgrade the power to power the system. So that's a lot of money to bring that uh, element online. So let's see instead what else I could do. I am going to spend fifty to bring my shields on up to snuff, and an extra two power, and I preserve fifty-eight uh, scrap. I do need to repair my ship at some point, so let's start there and see where that gets us. And of course there are stores which I can't use because I don't have the scrap anymore. Um, so I'm going to go here, here, and then stop by, I don't want to do that because then I'm stuck on the store and I can't go forward. If I do it the other direction, here, here, and here, then I would end up here and I'm still stuck. These stores are in the worst possible position. Okay. I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to go to the store. 
then I'm going to go out this direction. Uh, yeah, there's only one linking uh, system here. All right. All right, so here we go. You get hailed by an FTL core-powered uh, station. It's a bit of a typo there. Uh, welcome to your own private hostile encounter. You are our 36th customer in this standard year. Prepare to receive your payload. We are... <laughs> I am not messing with you, buddy. I'm just going to take you out. Now, hopefully, we can generate enough scrap to be able to power up our ion blaster. It'd be super nice to be able to do that. Okay. We have to get the shields down, though. I don't want to spend more shields on that, so. Wow, they've got resistance somehow to their systems. That's interesting. All right, you receive a hail from the pirate. His voice sounding dark and hollow. If I go down, I'll be taking you with me. They start to overload an attached FTL core. Uh, okay. Let's take out their engines, maybe. FTL delayed. So it uh, probably means they can't overload it while that condition survives, so. Nice. The station slowly breaks apart, leaving massive chunks of debris and scrap metal. You collect what you can, but the wreckage is so big that more time would be necessary to gather all the usable parts. You run a quick debris drift analysis to see what you could gather, and we can get a bunch of stuff. We can spend more time getting an extra missile, an extra drone, and more scrap. Yeah, let's grab more stuff. Why not? Uh, because we're about to hit the store. And this might be where we can... Uh, get some stuff that we actually want you don't like this place no one is ready to trade with you all they offer is some general ship equipment your first mate contacts you over the comms see this is definitely captain's edition stuff because boy howdy uh is the interaction with the stores different uh and captain i know it's supposed to be a trade space but we detect enemies in grid 37 you know you better get back here immediately it's a trap continue okay uh so I'm going to need to fix my stuff, and it's going to take 22 scrap to do it completely. Uh, we have an ion blast we could sell if we don't want it. What could we buy? Advanced plating, electric scrambler plating, which diminishes enemy hacking and mind control effectiveness. Ineffective against weaker attacks. Definitely something unique to the, the Captain's Edition. The beacon access kit can be used to, to cover your tracks and delay the pursuing re rebel fleet. It requires an empty beacon. So we find an empty beacon, we can access this and delay the rebel fleet. That's kind of interesting. As weaponry goes, artillery allows you to use a signature artillery weapon of your ship. I have no idea what that is uh, for this. For this guy, it might be like a big laser pulse weapon of some kind. Shall we try it? Like, there's so many ways to go with this. So many more options. Um, I'm going to go with it and see where this goes. Uh, it would be nice to be able to add a little extra punch. Um, and maybe we use that with the ion cannon. The funny thing is, is if we have this and that ion cannon, and we fully upgrade the weapons to take advantage of all of this, that may be all the weapons we need for the rest of the game. Although I wouldn't mind a more powerful laser, but I mean the laser chart is pretty quick. It gives us a couple of rapid shots. All right. Um, is there anything we can sell now? The question is, am I going to use the FTL fuel recycler? Because if I sold that, I could I could actually repair my ship. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to sell that item because I want to fix everything. That's all I can do. So let's take a look at this so-called signature weapon. It only takes it's a heavy artillery laser that automatically fires three projectiles that do two damage each, 30 seconds base cooldown. Uh, the uh, off is the artillery is not charging. Status is unpowered. Okay. 
So what we could do is we're not using our engines much, so we can engage that to see how it behaves. And it charges, that'll be first shot, second and third shot. So we can use this as a sort of a, a last blast, or if we have to, we can use it as a holdout to punch hard um, if for, a, for a stronger ship. Um, okay. Interesting. And I think that it, maybe if we can upgrade this, we can reduce its cooldown. So let's see if we can make this work for us. Uh, it's interesting that that does not look like it's going to take up quite as much effort as some of these. It's like it's a specialty weapon that's going to take less effort. Ow. Um. Okay, we need to take down those shields. Okay. The local traders hail at all frequencies, asking everyone to repeatedly repeatedly to cease hostilities. Come on, guys, cut the crap. Don't we all have some interest in keeping it quiet here? The pirate that is attacking you prepares to jump away. Well, we're we're not letting him jump away. So what we want to do is I'm going to spend a couple of laser shots on the, on the weapons and a couple of mm, which is coming up first? No, dual lasers on the FTL, missiles on the weapons. Okay, so now I'm going to go to laser blast only to preserve missiles, but note this interesting weapon, not part of the stock game. Uh, it's kind of a blinding weapon. Uh, it doesn't do many damage, as you can see. It's coming from a drone, which is super cool. Um, I'm not sure it's one that I can use on them, maybe. Uh, but I can't see part of my ship. That's kind of interesting. That is super interesting. The ship breaks apart. A few unregistered ships within the system are messaging their approval. The pirates look uh, you took out were obviously not very popular here. Yet, so are you. Exchange of trade goods seems out of the question after this incident. So we got some good material out of it. I'm, I'm totally keen with that. We didn't get to fire our primary weapon, but that's okay. Uh, but we do need to take power out of something in order to power the engines. I'm not healing anybody. Oh, actually, maybe I should. Let's quickly get Kaylas. Okay, everybody back to your stations. So this is where the game has at least a little strategy. If you don't have enough power to power everything, power some of the things some of the time. Let's jump to an unvisited location. So we're gonna grab here, here, and then out into this area. What appears to be a civilian ship sends a friendly hail. As you approach the vessel, you detect a teleporter signal, but it's too late. Intruders have beamed aboard. Intruders on board. Uh, you register only a single intruder going aboard. What's going on? The border immediately deploys several combat a AIs. It seems you're up against a well-equipped commando unit. Uh, okay. That's interesting. Um, okay, so here's how we're going to handle this. We're going to get all three of our guys in here to help deal. Oh, no, we can't do that. Uh, okay. Let's open all the doors, including the outer doors, particularly seal off the, uh, the uh, medical bay. to force everyone to come into the medical bay, except arguably the AIs, which I can't do anything about. They're trying to break into the medical bay from outside because I've closed doors. Okay, so now they're in, um, and now I have to close up enough of these doors so that I can keep the oxygen inside the medical bay. I'm hoping. Oh, I gotta make sure that I can stay healed. That'd be smart. OK. 
Okay, now they, uh, again, have to continually keep... adjusting the doorway so that I seal off the region that I want to stay healthy in. Yeah, and they did a lot of damage, actually. Okay, okay, okay. So I have to close all the doors in the ship. I got rid of some of the bad guys. The AIs don't take, uh, don't get damaged by oxygen, so I'm presuming that's why that occurred. Um, okay, let's see if I can juggle. So, okay, so one of them was alive, I think. And the rest were AIs. So the one that was alive uh, <coughs> suffered from being outside of the in the in the uh, in the vacuum of space, effectively inside the ship. When I got rid of all the oxygen, the other one, on the other hand, the other ones, on the other hand, looked like they were AIs and probably weren't affected by that. But they still ended up going into the um, into the medical bay in order to help out their pal, uh, which means that I could fight them there safely. Uh, but that didn't stop them from doing a little bit of damage to my ship. Very irritating, but, uh, eh, no big deal. So now I can turn off the medical bay, turn back on the jump drive, and let's, uh, let's carry on. A cruiser docked at this planet's main gateway station contacts you on secured channels. A smiling pirate lady in a ragged uniform appears on screen. Hey, Fed Cap, it's you. I've heard you are visiting our great sector. That is so nice of you, because you are not part of all this petty, these petty little rivalries we have going on here. You'll be useful. So before we even consider opening fire on each other and dancing the dance of death, I'd li love to propose a deal. It's super simple. You go out there and murder the hell out of the Purple Tentacles clan lord. In return, you get rich. Just make sure you uh, do not mention to anyone that the Claret Skulls sent you. Uh, I have no idea what the consequences of any of this are, but why not? Let's check this out. Why not? That's amazing. Give this person the uh, person the coordinates of our grand nemesis, please. Now, scat, little you, go and fulfill your mission. And we added a quest marker. I don't know what the consequences of attacking this person are. Chances are we wouldn't get the location of the other place. We might stumble into it. Uh, but it is what it is. We've, we've done this the way we've done this. Let's carry on. So there's our quest. So we have to make sure we hit that on our way through. Uh, we have to go here. There's really no other choice. You barely have time to register jump completion before your ship warns you of an incoming ship with weapons hot. The enemy seems equipped with a combat augment. Strong radiation is beamed at your ship. Your opponent is using dirty weapons. We're going to continue, and I don't know what the consequences of this are. Probably if my shields go down, I'm going to take health damage, I would guess. Another problem... Another problem is that we can't use missiles... I mean, missiles and lasers will do the same thing in whittling down this super shield. So it's kind of a waste of missiles, except that the missiles will help. Uh... And I can't enable the ion blast, and it wouldn't help anyway because it only fires um, one shot. Although it would do so faster. Um, so that looks like it's about a little less than half of the rate of fire. Uh, sorry, a little less than half of the recharge time of this. How do I want to do this? What I might want to consider is adding one slot in weapons. I can't do this now, but when I'm finished with this, one slot in weapons plus the power, and that way if I disable the missiles or disable the dual laser, I can then bring the ion blast online, which may be useful in some circumstances like this. Uh, okay, so let's... Oh, they've taken out oxygen. That's what they've done with this radiation thing. 
Okay, so we have to take this out fast. Because otherwise we're all going to be hunkering down in the uh, medical bay. Ow. Ow. All right. All right. So, lasers there. Uh, add power, remove power. Uh, it automatically fires three projectiles that do two damage each. 30 second base cooldown. I don't think I can actually ask this to fire. It's simply going to happen when it gets charged enough. I think I'm okay. Oxygen's coming down to 50%. Okay, you've made your point. We're beaten. Take these and leave us to our uh, to our shame. Four missiles, which would be nice, and only 15 scrap. Um, yeah, let's accept it because having those missiles is going to be useful. Uh, the exchange of goods goes without problems. Honor the truce. Let them leave. That's fine. Okay. Oh, we've got, actually got a fire going on on board. Okay, well, let's deal with that. Heal everyone up, including the captain. So let's do what I do, just said I was going to do. Uh, oh, I can't. I need 50 plus another 25. I need 75 to actually do that. Uh, okay. Oh, that's why that's not happening, is I have not put any power into the... Uh, into the medical bay. All right, so um, I'm clearly spending a fair bit of time juggling my power systems, and that's fine. Um, so what are we doing here? We are going to do... Here, 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 and then here. What can I get away with? Probably not all that. But let's, yeah, let's go here. We'll find out. You receive confused comm chatter from a small pirate station. Various individuals scream into the comms. The voice is modified by overlay effects. Strange music plays in the background. You don't seem to understand what they say, but they definitely don't seem friendly. After a bit, they power up their weapons. Okay. Uh... We're gonna do shields and weapons. She'll do shields and yeah, we'll put the missiles on the shields because we it's they're more likely to hit and we absolutely need to take them down. I think I'm gonna start doing that. Right. Oh, nasty. Nasty nasty. Okay, okay, let's uh, let's get the oxygen repaired ahead of time. Okay, you're quite a worthy opponent, but we still have some uh, aces up our sleeves. Execute plan Delta. Escape pods leave the station, and its FTL signature starts fluctuating. It's going to blow up. Uh, okay. I don't think so. The station's generator core detonates, tearing the structure apart. You gather what you can from the wave of scrap that is sent flying past in all directions. Okay, let's add to this and add to this. Which means that now, in a pinch, I could swap over between missiles and the ion blast if we're in a situation which is... Um, in fact, uh, let's start experimenting with using this combination instead. Because I think what's gonna, what we can do here is the ion blast is going to take out the shields um, 
pretty directly um, and keep them disabled. And the dual laser can then do some punching. We'll, we'll see how this we'll see how this plays out. I think I want to try this pattern. So let's try experiment with this and find out how well it works anyway. A ship with pirate marking hails you. Hello, Captain. You have been causing the rebels quite a headache. The bounty on your crew is substantial. Hand one of your crewmen over and we'll share it. Uh, that bounty could be vital to our survival. Draw straws and hand over. We're not handing over a crewman. Forget that. I mean, the Firebomb Mark II is super cool, but we're not sacrificing a crewman to get that. You don't give in to pirate uh, demands. Power your weapons and prepare to fight. Uh, your crew reports. We're moving in hot. You darn straight. So Ion Blast. doesn't really matter where I hit, but here's the thing. If the Ion Blast gets through more than once, then I want to make sure it's sort of auto-targeted on a thing I want to have them keep down. Um, but hitting the outer shields will automatically target the shields by nature hitting the shields. So what I'm going to do is this. So if it gets past the shields, it will then disable the um, disable the weapons. And um, oh, and now I can't get out of the room. That's fantastic. All right, well that was my mistake. All right, the lasers are going to target the weapons because the shields are temporarily disabled. Right? So that's doing a good job of keeping the shields offline a good chunk of the time. Now I could be much more fiddly about this and time the shots between the uh, the ion cannon. Actually, I'm going to switch the ion cannon over to that. Uh, between the ion cannon and the lasers, to make sure that the lasers don't hit the shield. And the reason why that's useful is the ion cannon can't actually do damage. Uh, so you don't want... If you're going to have an ion cannon and any other kind of weapon, you want the ion cannon to target the shields first so that other weapons can get through and do permanent damage. And if the shield's already down, then you can let the ion cannon target any system. So... Uh, your efforts succeed, uh, successfully convict these pirates of their terrible crimes. Their destruction is their punishment. Your payment is their remains. All right. Let's get everybody back to where they're supposed to be. I'm going to do a jump. I come inward to here. After completing the jump, your ship's AI warns you of a station with considerable threat level and improvised FTL systems. Their weapons are hot, and you will have to engage them to remain in the beacon range. Yep, that's fine. So again, uh, the red la the laser is going to target the uh, the weapons to be able to take a punch at them. I think. I don't know. I don't know where I want the lasers to target, but provided the iron blast takes out the shields, I kind of want the lasers to take out the. There we go. To take out the weapons permanently. Never quite sure how I want to balance this, but I want to keep the shields down as much as possible so that I can keep doing permanent damage so that my real weapons don't impact the shields. But I want to keep the weapons down as hard as possible. Your scanner, because that way they don't hit me. Um, your scanners register impressive energy spikes. The station seems to be equipped with an improvised FTL core, which has been set to overload. Multiple escape pods and tiny shuttles leave the station. Perhaps you should get out of here too. All right. The station slowly breaks apart, leaving massive chunks of debris and scrap material. You collect what you can, but the wreckage is so big that more time would be necessary to gather all the usable. So this is one of the situations where I can gather some stuff or more stuff. Uh, let's gather. Oh, that was not the key I meant to hit. I guess we're leaving early. I meant to actually grab the extra fuel, but whatever. Um, that's that's my fault. Okay, so of my choices, I can actually go back here. And then to either of these two and still make the quest marker. So I'm going to do that because we really want to uh, get as many of these jumps as we can. Your jump leads you to nothing but empty space. The jump beacon serves no purpose other than as a connection. Suddenly, the computer reports a weak incoming transporter signal. The internal sensors show nothing out of the ordinary, though. 
Um, send the crew to search the ship for anything unusual. The team searches every room of the ship but discover nothing out of the ordinary. You conclude that nothing came on board. The crew relaxes and you pour yourself some replicator coffee while waiting for the DL to charge. Well, that's going to come and bite me in the behind later on. All right. So, uh, here and then the quest and then the exit. All right. This beacon has been placed too close to a super giant Class M star. The uh, ship will gradually overheat until you get out of here or die. A pirate, apparently oblivious to the dangers of the sun, moves in to engage. All right. Now, they have one of these super shields, but fortunately, uh, the ion blast will help whittle this down. So... Assuming it hits. All right. Come on. Come on. See, there's an ending. That's fine. Uh, we can actually evacuate that space to put out that fire. So that was an indicate. That was a situation where bad timing meant that my lasers impacted the uh, the shield instead of the uh, pulse cannon, which meant uh, didn't do as much damage as I could have early on. But no longer shall these pirates terrorize the people of the sector. Your final volley confirms their demise. Pick up a uh, useful from the debris before moving on. Sweet. All right, let's close the doors to the ship. Now, unfortunately, we can't leap away until the FTL charges in its slow mode because this could, uh, the, the sun could hurt us. Usually, when there's nothing in the system, you're completely free and clear, the jump button will just come back because making you wait for the FTL to charge when there's nothing that can possibly impact you is not helpful. So, all right, this is going to be a big fight, probably. You arrive near the home planet of the Purple Tentacles. Their commander, uh, the commander of the Claret Skulls, wants you to take out their leader. But you realize you might be in over your head here. Anti-ship batteries line the planet's orbits. You spot the pirate's flagship docked at a small trade depot. You can approach the planet and attack the pirate cruiser. You can hail them and reveal that you were sent here by the Claret Skulls, or you can abandon the quest and leave. Well, we're going to give it a shot. Your speed towards the Purple Tentacle flagship with weapons hot. Your hostile intentions are met with surprise hails, of which you answer none. Anti-ship batteries all around the planet power up and the cruiser's weapon come alive. Well, let's see what we can do. This could be the end of us right here. Alright. They're going to be firing those things at us. It's going to be a real pain in the neck. Uh, we have got to... They do not have shields. They only have their cloaking device, which we want to make sure is disabled. Uh, however, we're going to fire the... So we're going to keep that disabled with the Ion Blast. We're going to fire the weapon... Uh, oh, that's bad. This is going to be a tough battle. All right, so I am going to fire the lasers at the cloaking device now that the weapons are temporarily down. I'm going to disable the ion blast because I want to bring the missiles online because we have to do permanent damage to this thing as fast as possible. And we are going to fire that at, I don't know, the O2. And actually, we'll fire the dual laser at the O2 as well. Okay, uh, we're going to fire everything we've got at the weapons, because we want to keep those weapons out. You proved a sufficient match for the pirates. They're powering up their FTL and trying to get away. Okay, we have to prevent them from escaping, because otherwise all this will be for naught. All right, the Pirate Lord hails you. I don't know who you are, but you flex your space muscles well enough now. We'll pay your tribute even if, if you spare our flagship. Accept that offer, a fuel, a couple of missiles, and a bunch of scrap. We're going to ignore their pleas and attack, I think. All 
trying to get them back over to all right a last hit on the opponent's ammo storage and the cruiser i can into bright flames while you salvage from the remains the wreckage slowly drifts towards the planet until it finally burns up in the atmosphere the anti-ship batteries have gone quiet Many small ships have gathered nearby to witness what is happening. You are about to leave when a tiny civilian craft contacts you on the secured channels. Oh no, the leader of the Purple Tentacles is dead. Anyway, I got you this treasure map you wanted. X marks a spot and all. Have fun. They transmit coordinates and jump away. This must be where your reward waits. It could be a trap for all we know, but it added a quest marker to the next sector. All right, so what we have to do is repair the engines in order to be able to get out of here. And we have to repair this hole, which is going to hurt our guys. But hopefully we can do this and then get into the, the medical bay. All right, get out of there, go. And while we're doing that, we take the engines offline, power up the medical bay. Now, we have taken quite a bit of damage doing this. I'm hoping we can get that repaired at some point. Okay, so let's, um, let's do a bunch of repairing here. Okay, I gotta get you out of there and into the medical bay. You guys can go in there and finish the repairs on this thing. Holes in the ship are bad, okay? <laughs> anyway. Okay, you get back in there for healing. Swanky. All right, let's get everybody back to stations. Boy, we haven't found anybody to take on board our ship, though. If we could hire somebody maybe at a at a store. I was hoping to find some by way of uh, by way of quests. We'll see. Okay, so uh, more power to the engines. Uh, we could add more power to leave the engines on more permanently. Uh, let's do that, actually, because now we can power everything on our ship that we can power at once. We can't power this, but we don't have the system supplies for it anyway until we get another two slots. So, not a very big deal. Oh, we can't actually power the ion blast. All right, let's get one more power bar, and now we can do that. So the advantage to this is that the stronger our engines, the more we can just dodge out of the way of, of shots. And actually, this is just as good as shields at keeping you out of trouble. Not quite as good. Um, but it uh, does a really good job against missiles, which shields do not stop. So let's get to the exit. And I'm glad we just have enough leeway to make that a reality. You found an abandoned long-range relay. It is still functional. You could use it to cover great distance. You run into a stray squadron of the Federation performing emergency repairs to the beacon. Looks like they are in fast retreat. Ask for help. They say they have nothing to spare. Unfortunately, your mission codes are not known to this squadron. You part ways, offer a formal exchange of news from the war. No, oh, that's unfortunate. Maybe there was a story beat that we could have had there. But in any case, let's go to the next sector. Now it's actually Social Trade Sector 21-F3 or Manufactoria 12B. Now, I'm going to take this one, and the reason why is because the hazards are likely to be the nebula. Um, actually, do I want the nebula? This kind of nebula doesn't tend to help slow down the enemy fleet. Let's go with Local Trade Sector. The crew is glad that you made it out of the sector. You consider how much fuel to spend during long-range jump. Uh, we have a fair bit of fuel. Travel at standard FTL speed to the next sector. I presume if we travel at minimum FTL speed, then the, uh, then the fleet is much closer behind us. The crew carefully monitors course and fuel usage. You spend the majority of the journey in your quarters trying to make sense of the sector ahead. Okay, some Federation-friendly sectors like this still exist in the galaxy, but with Federation military retreating, rebels and pirates do as they please. Um, we don't... I don't really want to try to produce another upgrade uh, at this point. Um, well, I could. Do I want to socialize with the crew, though? Well, let's consider some upgrades. Everyone gathers in the Situation Room and is briefed on the progress of the mission. You inquire about the state of the ship, and your engineer says there are some improvements that could be made. 
you consider our options. Now we've already got this, uh, this ammo uh, manufacturer. So we're just gonna go with, uh, and this may change with different ships and it may change maybe with a different crew, I don't know. Uh, but we're just gonna socialize with the crew a little bit. Um, so actually, given what just happened there, that means that I should always go into that menu item because I'm still giving an given an option to go come back here even after I find out what I might be able to build. In terms of what I can produce, uh, I can produce ammo, but I'm already good on ammo, so talk to the humanoid crew. Your humanoid crew member thinks that most Federation bases in the sector have been destroyed, but there are always rumors about a secret special forces base at a nearby beacon. You could check it out. Edit a quest marker. Sweet. All right, now we have two quests. One that was our pirate treasure, and the other of which is the uh, is the um, one that we just got for our crew member. So talking to crew members can occasionally lead to quests. Another thing to note is that several of these beacons have nebulae, and the advantage to nebulae that are small like this, that are not sector wide, is that the is that they uh, have not been pre-navigated by the federation chasing us and so if we stick to these areas we have the problem that we can't see very well through the nebula um, but we gain the advantage that it slows down the fleet so we can hop to more of these and that's super super useful so going through as many of these as we can which probably means going this way uh, so uh, probably here 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 and over to this quest going through these three stations what well, should like delay the fleet um which enables us to hit more of these items but it does come at the cost of not being able to see properly and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to up the uh strength we have in our um in our scanner which you'll notice comes with its own power supply. So when we upgrade these three systems, we don't need to worry about eating up our precious uh, power reserves to use them. So I may actually upgrade that to full because a fully functional um, scanner could be super useful. Uh, we can see the enemy interior with this. Uh, level two is see enemy interior. Uh, we can also, if we go up to level three, see how far the enemy's weapons are charged. Um, and we can't get to four without um, some. We can't get to level four without some uh, boosting situations, which we won't go into until it happens to us. Uh, so let's just get on with this. So we're gonna pop here first. A rebel captain appears on screen. I thought we had been doomed to backwater assignments. This is my chance to get back in the commander's good graces. Charge the weapons. All right. So. We are going to go back to Ion Blast mode. So we've damaged the weapons, now we're going to focus on damaging the shields so that we can keep the shields down. Although, stunning this guy is not a bad plan. I don't know if we managed to stun him. Oh, look at that, we can also get to information on the health of the characters. Direct numeric terms, that's kind of nice. Doesn't appear to be stunning them. I thought that was one of the gigs for this particular. Was it chance of stun? Might be chance of stun. You've made your point, we were beaten. Take these and leave us to our shame. Accept their offer, we will not accept surrender. That's seven missiles. Um, that's a lot. So we're going to take that. Uh, we're going to honor the truce and let the uh, enemies leave. Now, it's going to take uh, time to charge the FTL because there's a background hazard, so we just got to wait that out. We can't do any upgrades while we're in here, so we're going to hop in and go to this one. Right. You feel naked without functioning sensors. You have expected a rebel ship to appear from behind a cloud at any moment, but none come. Uh, socialize with your crew while the FTL charges. Consider some upgrades to your custom ship equipment. Do something on board the ship. We don't need to do this one. Now we can check the custom upgrades because we know we can go back to socializing crew. Only the ammo consuming weapon. I don't know what could uh, change this, but let's just socialize. Hum uh, humanoid crew. Your humanoid crew member is prejudiced against the madness. That's fine. 
So we're going to go to here, here. We we either stop by the... No, we have to go to the quest. I think we have to go directly to the quest. And bypass the store. A heavily damaged Federation ship is hiding in the nebula at this beacon. Before you have time to make contact with them, they fade into the nebula. We're going to help follow... We're going to try to follow and help them. While searching fruitlessly, you stumble across, across the rebel ship, which the Federation loyalists were likely hiding from. You prepare a fight. I should have upgraded my sensors at the last jump, and I didn't, and that's a bit of a shame. Because I think I probably could have tracked them. Alright, let's, uh... Let's... Do a laser on that, but... Ion blast on... Um, on the shields? <laughs> Wow, they've, they've got good dodging capabilities. All right. So one disadvantage going through the nebula is my the advancements in my sensors don't let me see the inside. It's a pity. Now, there are ways around that. Oops. I accidentally, instead of controlling my weapons, controlled the menu option, which is likely do you want to surrender or just take something. Um, it's an unfortunate side effect of having these on the numeric keypads, uh, the, the controls of the weapons, while the, um, the menu items also are controlled the same way, but what are you going to do? Alright, as the vessel is torn apart from your final assault, you wonder why the rebels uh, became like this as you move in to scrap the ship. So we got a bunch of scrap, which is great. But we lost track of the ship we were chasing, so... Now... Our only real option is to go here, so let's make that jump. And this is a dangerous area, because this actually uh, nerfed our shields as well as our sensors. I still forgot to upgrade the sensors, like I was going to. But we did upgrade them far enough that we get one shield out of it. You jump into a sector of the nebula beset by a plasma storm. An automated rebel scout station at the beacon moves into attack. That's fine. You engage the ship. Uh, and it doesn't have shields, either because it never had them or because of the nebula. So we're just going to focus everything on the weapons. Oh, and we don't have... No, we can't do that because it's also nerfed our weapons. It's actually taken out a lot of our power. And I don't think I want to sacrifice anything else to get the Ion Cannon as such. So... The AI craft, AI craft hails you. This is an automated message. Resisting our takeover is pointless. Prepare to die. You've heard it all before. With any luck, though, we've got more protection than they do. We should just be able to whittle them down. Ooh, look at that. Uh, another automated ship is sent to the scrapyard as it breaks apart. You salvage what looks usable from its remains before pressing onwards. Uh, we have a small bomb, and bombs are nice because uh, we can teleport them past the shields, uh, except for super shields, uh, which means that we they can't get shot down by anti-missile weaponry, and um, it also means they can't, well, they can miss. Uh, I don't know what other advantages there are. Let's find out what this small bomb offers us. We'll have to do that at the next jump, though. All right, we're going for a quest, so we're hitting this unvisited location. A Mantis military scout seems to have just finished a salvage op in a nearby wreck. They have no time to waste with warnings and wish, appear to wish to fight. Well, we'll continue that. So, let's... Okay, so the small bomb, it ignores shields. Uh, it requires a missile, so I, it's not like you get it for free. Its possible effect is fire. Its system damage is 2. Crew damage is 30. Whereas with the Periton, uh, normal damage is one, but it could stun for three seconds. Uh, so the advantage is, is that this one uses less energy to do specific damage to the systems and crew and possible fire effect. Uh, and it has about the same recharge time, maybe a little bit longer as the Periton Missile. The only advantage this has is it's two shots, which means that the chance on at least one of them hitting um, is good. So this is actually still two damage. So two damage um, in total of both hit. 
Um, this one is two damage to both hit. This one could stun. This one could possibly start a fire, but this requires less power. So this is conceivably the one that I actually want to experiment with and find out how that works. But I can't power this and the ion blast. So what I want to work at doing, probably, um, probably before the next quest marker, is adding just one more power and one more systems to the weapons. And then I can have the bomb and the ion blast and the dual laser all operational at once. So but let's turn on the shields because we need more shields. Uh, more of the engines and uh, and the medical band case I need it so let's uh, let's start targeting that was not an efficient use of my ion cannon and lasers but uh, because I I could have done more damage to the weapons if I timed that better but that's okay And again, we see that if I can hold out long enough, um, I can get my primary weapon to fire. So the violent streak of this group of mantis has been brought to an end in the form of an equally violent explosion to the ship, and I got a bunch of resources. Great. So let's go and check this out. I wanted to do this. One more systems, one more power, which eats up a lot of resources. Now let's take a look at this, by the way. If we can get our base cooldown. So base cooldown times 1.25. If I add 30 units, I can get my base cooldown to 1. And I can cut it all the way down to a half if I spend an outrageous amount of resources. But then every... So we're at 1.25. So we're actually going to 1025... 0 0.5 over 1025 would give me the base cooldown from where I am now, which is actually better than half. So I could get this firing really fast. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So I could consider using this um, as one of my primary weapons, and I probably should start gearing up in that direction. So why don't we... I kind of want to get more shields, too. Everything requires scrap, right? All right. So we can bring a small bomb online. I really want to get this upgraded, but there's not realistically any way for me to have all four of these with high-powered weapons and have this guy active because it just takes too much power, right? Literally too much power. I can get the systems upgraded far enough. That's not the problem. I'm with enough scrap. Um, which is an advantage to having it as a separate item as opposed to in here because these guys both take power and they take the system stack up as a resource this caps out before these can be all maximized to super big weapons so I do have to pick and choose if I'm limited by this stack by having this weapon here I'm not limited by this stack because it has its own stack of, res of system resources we can apply but it is still limited by power, and I can only produce so much power. Um, I'll just have to play with this. I don't know where this is going. I do not know where this is going. Uh, now, I also, though, want to add one more to sensors. Might be useful to know what the enemy's weapon charge is, but there's also some quests that involve having good sensors so let's do that do i want to do that actually maybe what i want to do is up my engines that would be 45 except i still need power because this enables us to dodge all wep uh, almost any kind of weapon actually so let's do that slowly increase our defensive capabilities offward into questing okay you find the planet at the indicated coordinates your initial scan show the planet to be barren and devoid of life but you get a prompt reply when you broadcast on federation frequencies 
Hello, so nice to see friends. We'll bring you up some supplies. We have a heavy anti-combat drone. Problem with that is we don't have a drone system. So if we want to use this rather than sell it, we will have to engage a drone system. That would be super useful. Let's see what this reads. Sluggish drone that can disable multiple enemy combat drones with huge ion blasts. Less effective against fast drones. Reloads in eight seconds. That's um, interesting. This could be super useful against enemies that tend to have a lot of combat drones. It could still be useful, and I, it, I wouldn't mind having a, um, a drone system, but we'll have to get one. In the meantime, though, um, let's just carry on. That w that did not cause us a fight. Now, I think there's some... Uh, I think... Where do we want to go from here? If we go... We want to eventually get to the quest. So I think we want to come up through here. Several of these connect to the quest marker. But then I have to come back to get to the exit. So the downside is that if I'm up here, but the ship is ar the uh, the fleet has already advanced to near here, then I'm kind of in trouble. So I got to be kind of careful. But if I can get here, here, and here, then I'll have to go. Then I may have to go to here and then immediately back. So let's let's find out how this works. Let's find out um, if we can do this. All right. Sensors go wild as a nearby pulsar is detected. While you are attempting to recalibrate the FTL drive, a pirate sneaks up in your ship. Weapons charging, preparing for a fight. Okay. So let's try a couple of things here. Let's try uh, the the dual laser, uh, sorry, the ion blast on weapons, but that'll help take out the shields. You'll notice, by the way, that now we have two shields. So this is going to kind of be a problem. Um, and we're going to uh, mark the bomb for the shields as well in case all else fails. So that'll take out one. <laughs> So I temporarily took out one of the shields. Got a bomb in there, which helped take out the other shield. The other shield uh, slot anyway, so that's good. Now the small bomb, I'm gonna redirect over to the weapons. How do I wanna do this? No. Laser on weapons, bomb back on shields, because it could do crew damage as they're trying to repair the shield. Ion blast also on um, the weapons to keep that out. Okay. Yeah, so that did quite a bit of damage to our pal here, and that doesn't bother me at all. I'm going to disable a small bomb to preserve... Yeah, I could still keep using a small bomb. Actually, let's... Let's not mess around. Oh, hello. Hello, here we go. They offer you some of the cargo if you let them live. Accept their offer. That's not a lot, and these guys attacked me, so we're going to not accept surrender in this case. Uh, that pulsar is taking out our systems as we go, which is kind of irritating. I'm going to make sure the shields don't come back up. Because they, they can't repair this until they put out the fire anyway, so. I like the fact that my dual laser has the possible effect of fire. That makes me happy. Alright, so what do we got here? 40 scrap instead, and we got to miss a lot of it. I'm good with that. One last explosion marks their fate. Okay. Uh, ooh. Now we have a new thing to consider, and that's that we have this distress beacon. So, if I go here, I could maybe cycle through here and then make a double jump back. I'm not going to be able to go this way if I want to. Mm -hmm. If I come here, I'm going to have to come back through the distress anyway, so. All right. You have arrived in the sector and are greeted by a science vessel waiting by the beacon. They tell you, we find ourselves low on fuel and have a proposition. Give them three fuel, they give us three zones. Uh, three drones. I'm not really using drones right now, it's not a major win for me, and fuel is precious, so I'm going to reject their offer. 
Uh. All right, store it is. The space station here is a traveling merchant who shows you his wares. Uh, you consider trading with a trader. This may take some time. Buy a shipment of consumer goods. I don't know what that does. It maybe mean that I can sell them at another store at a major advantage. Buy a haul of food rations. Buy a assortment of uh, luxury goods. I have a slot for this. Let's see what happens. Let's go with luxury goods um, and, and see what that gets us. Ooh, Fleet Pursuit is doubled for a jump. Okay, that's bad. Okay, right, so what do we want here? Do we want to get drone control? Oh, what's a Hasta Beam? Outdated beam weapon. Low power, one room hit, fire chances low. No, I'm okay with that. The laser charger, the uh, weapon can charge two times, uh, giving an additional projectile. No, I'm okay. Uh, and I already have a small bomb, so I'm not too interested in these. Hacking crew teleporter or drone control? Well, to get the drone control, I would have to sell something. That's rough. Uh... Yeah, so if I sold my Periton Missile Launcher, I'm kind of inclined to do that because this takes up, this does the same amount of damage. If it misses, it's all or nothing, which is a problem. This has a chance of at least potentially hitting at least once because it's unlikely to miss twice. It could, but it's less likely to hit, miss twice. Uh... Oh, that's rough. So it allows for two projectiles for the cost of one, but their damage is only one. Oh, I'm going to go sell... <laughs> this is a gamble. I'm going to sell the Periton missiles in order to be able to afford drone control. Okay. Then I'm going to fix everything I can. Oh, that's rough. Now I've got the problem that I'm not going to make it to the exit before the first uh, advancing wave here uh, encompasses the exit. But I'm not missing out on this quest, so this is going to be a fight to get out of this uh, this sector. You arrive at the coordinates given to you by the Claret uh, Skulls agent. The beacon is located in an empty space far away from any populated systems. Regardless, you pick up an X-shaped radiation signature. It leads to a small treasure cache containing supplies and a weapon. The, uh, all of this is welcome, totally welcome. Uh, the Heavy Ion Mark One. So let's take a look at what that is. Oops, so we don't need to go into here. The Heavy Ion uh, is, shots per charge is one. Possible effect is stun, ion damage is two. Uh, so that does more ion damage. Isn't that interesting? This does, this has a much, much longer recharge time than the Ion Blast 2. I think I want the speed. I don't think I necessarily want this, but I'll keep it as an optional weapon, not one that I have on all the time. Now, to get the laser defense grid coming, coming but bleh, 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 the laser, oh, hang on. This is cargo. We could actually put this in here. So the laser defense drone shoots down incoming missiles, mines, and asteroids, reloads in one second. That's really, really useful to have. But as an alternative, if the uh, enemy is drone heavy, this might be a better one to engage. I only need two power to be able to power at least one of them. And I don't have the power available, but I could eventually get it. All right, we're, we're good with this. This is an interesting combination. So let's get to the Distress Beacon and then get out of the area. Okay, you arrive at the Distress Beacon near a small asteroid belt and find a ship with pirate markings partially crushed between two large rocks. It must have been illegally mining the belt without proper equipment. Try to dislodge a ship by shooting at the rocks. You fire a few volleys at the rock and it starts to shudder and break apart. Without shields, the pirate ship takes a beating but eventually pulls free. They thank you for your assistance. Okay, I'm good with that. Um, 
Now we've got quite a cache of drones, so I should start looking into what it's going to take in order to power up that laser defense. And I think the only thing that that takes is power, except I can't get two power, but I can get one, and I can get the next one. Uh, I can get another one by draining the engines or like draining the medical bay, which I'm not always using, to temporarily power these guys up. And I think that's actually gonna be super valuable. Oh God, yeah, oh, this is gonna be rough. This is going to be super rough. Okay, it's hardly surprising that the cruiser squadron has moved in to guard the strategic position. You are hailed. This is the Rebel Guard asset, RS Base Drop. Just wanted to let you know who you're dealing with. Now prepare to die. Now, I'm not going to be able to take these guys out, I don't think. Uh, I've just got to survive long enough. So this is a good chance to use that laser defense drone. And... I don't know. I don't want to waste a lot of bombs on these guys, but um, let's... God, I don't know what I want to do here. Come on. Okay, so I'm going to take the bombs off the table. I'm going to keep the drone. I'm going to keep the. Oh, what do I want to do here? I kind of want to keep disabling their weapons for now. So that's going to be the dual laser here, the ion blast here. Uh, I'm going to go back to the laser blast on shields. I mean, it's conceivable that I could actually take this ship out. Ooh, especially because of my primary weapon. Holy crap. As long as I can survive long enough, that's pretty punchy. The problem is, I, the problem is even if I beat these guys... Um, uh, okay, so actually, we're going to set the Ion Blast here and the lasers here. Let's keep those shields really heavily down. Oh, especially because I started a fire. I'm good with that. Let's um, focus my weapons on the uh, on their weapons. I'm kind of curious what happens if I take these guys down and may get one fuel out of them or something. Okay, uh, I am blast on the shields. The problem is you don't have time to pick up major resources. So am I destroying these guys? It's kind of heroic but yeah you see i only get one fuel out of it oh but the fleet is delayed by two jumps you did it the cruiser's weapon systems overloaded munitions explode and the ship is torn apart with one of their favorite elite units destroyed the rebel fleet will probably advance more cautiously now but the rest of the squadron is already closing in there's no time to salvage a huge wreck everyone get ready to jump attempt to salvage the wreck anyway oh hell yes um this is bad a bad idea but Let's do it. Oh, ouch! Several cruisers fire their ASB and a full volley crushes into your ship before you can even get close. Your crew scrambles to examine the damage. You can't stay your captain. You'll get assaulted. Yeah, that was a bad, bad idea. All right. That was a bad idea. I, I, I took a chance, and that was dumb. All right. The Palandrian systems. I don't know if that's even possible, incidentally. Uh, we're going to spend the standard amount of fuel, but I do have to start looking for more fuel. Uh, consider some upgrades. Ooh, drones. Reserve part of the ship for the construction of drones. So that's another, uh, uh, drone manufacturer is something else that I can consider building eventually. Humanoid crew, have a word. Humanoid crew member is too busy to talk. Yeah, that's probably true. All right, let's get at repairing the rest of the ship. Everybody into the shield area. Oh my god, what a mess. Okay, actually, let's save repairing the shield for another day. we got to be super diligent about getting our oxygen supply back up on, online. Okay. Huh. 
Come on. I, I don't know if I can do this. Just one guy. I'm not thinking I can. Nope, I can't. I have to do this with two crew members. Okay, you guys get into the O2 chamber. You get back into here. Losing oxygen like this is a terrible, terrible problem. Because the whole ship is starting to lose oxygen, but that... but. If that room already has no oxygen, um, the only place you can possibly keep yourself alive is in a distant uh, medical repair bay. <laughs> Which is rarely optimal. Alright, you get in to repair the shields. Oh man, that was terrible. That was a dumb, dumb thing for me to do. You do not want to get into this situation. Not even a little bit. I had to try it. Uh, lots of stores, which I, I guess I kind of care about because I could repair at least some of this terrible damage, but... Alright, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here... Hopefully collect a little more scrap and then pop back to the store. Hopefully I don't get destroyed in the process. Alright, a small blip appears on the system map. The sector archives a ship as a local pirate with a long rap sheet. Unidentified cruiser. Surrender or you will be destroyed. They are closing in fast. Continue. Alright, let's see what we can do here. we got to bring all of our weapons uh, sort of to bear on this one. We have to get those shields down. We want to stand any chance of being able to do like more substantial damage. Uh, small bomb can go off. Actually, the small bomb can go off there. Let's retarget on the laser weapon. Right. All right. Man, that that flash grenade thing is just brutal. All right, so uh, laser here. We're gonna take this power. Uh, we're gonna sorry. We're gonna take the uh, ion blast and focus it on the drones to temporarily disable that. Yeah, really nice to have fire going on because it's really hard for them to get it out. Enemy ship appears to be powering up its FTL. Notice I've got serious fuel issues. Have to disable their ability to leap out of the. Oh, hello. When did you run out of oxygen? That's a problem. All right, you win. Here's some equipment from our stores. Leave us alone. Uh, that's fine because I need the fuel. Honor your truce and let the enemy live. I guess their drone sucked out oxygen. I'm glad I noticed before Garfield snuffed it. I don't need to lose crew. Everybody back to stations. O2 levels are doing okay. Add one more. No, we gotta save. We gotta save. Um, no, we can't. Just can't change the power. Have to do what I was gonna say and repair the ship. We have to repair the ship. A trade depot orbits a nearby planet. Multiple merchant ships are docked. Looks like you strike a bargain here. Uh. I don't want to buy any of these because I already bought one. Just quickly check the available equipment. Um, is there anything here I can even afford? The onboard science lab. Uh, this enables you various, uh, can yield various results. Uh, I'd like you to conduct research and surveys. Requires an empty beacon. Huh. I do have a slot for it. It could be interesting. And it only costs 10 units and I can get rid of it later. So let's do that, but then we've got to fix as much of our ship as we can. We've got to keep an eye out for fuel. Fuel is now our crisis. And we got rid of that make fuel augment that we had prior. Okay, so we're going to pop here, possibly through here to, do to delay the enemy fleet, and then back up through here. Right. You arrive at a populated sector. One merchant seems to be mass producing a request for mercenary ship, uh, mass broadcasting a request for a mercenary ship to aid him. Shall we respond? Sure. 
Wow, someone is actually responding. We have an ammunition shipment to deliver, but our ship has been grounded due to some silly maintenance regulations. We need to... We need you to transport this cargo of missiles to a small outpost a few jumps from here. They will pay us uh, pay as agreed, and you get a nice bonus. Sure. Fine. Just don't lay a hand on the cargo, okay? Uploading coordinates. Add a quest marker. Um, I I don't need the extra missiles. Um, and I could sell them, I suppose. But oh, except I only have two fuel. Oh, that's gonna be a problem. Well, this could be a short game. There's a black market hub here. You receive a message. These are dangerous times. If you have extra military grade explosives, we'll, we'll gladly pay you for them. Uh, sell 15 missiles for 45 scrap. Ammo, ammo manufacturer offered to manufacture some warheads if they provide the materials. That's going to take time though. I'm going to sell 15 missiles uh, for 45 scrap because that's a pretty good deal. Thank you. This will help greatly. That's fine. really need fuel. Here's hoping there's a ship here I can snag fuel from. The rebels must have anticipated you would try to lose them within the nebula. An automated defense turret was waiting for you with the beacon. The enemy seems to be equipped with a combat augment. You detect a jamming signal capable of disrupting communications link with automated drones. So I can't launch drones. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Alright. So. Uh, right. Everything on the shields until the shields come down and then go after the weapons. I think. Uh, okay, so I think I can redirect one and two while the bomb pops into the shields. Yes. Redirect my one and two to shields and take the bombs offline so I'm not wasting them. Right. The satellite sends surrender codes. The AI must have calculated that continuing the, the uh, uh, engagement is not in its favor. Honorably accept the surrender of the AI. It's just the computer continue the engagement and send it to Silicon Hell. I don't know what is involved in accepting the surrender of the AI. Let's try it. The AI surrenders without any conditions. The program has evolved beyond its initial specifications. I fear destruction. Fascinating. Systems analysis show it would be possible to download and reprogram the Rebel AI. It could serve as a crewman aboard your ship. Sure, let's try this. An away team salvages a hollow generation unit from the turret while you reprogram the AI. After some brief tests, the avatar materializes on board the ship. Uh, that's great, but we have no fuel, and that's a really serious problem. Okay, uh, we have no fuel. Uh, we're going to turn on the distress be Oh, I did hit wait instead. Okay. As you drift, uh, as you wait either salvation or death, your attention is drawn to a sea of debris drifting past a starboard viewport. The chunks are, I can't speak today. I can words. The chunks gliding by grow bigger in size until the stern of a rock frigate get it in some distant war comes into view. Yes, I'm an away team. Perhaps there's some viable fuel left aboard. A small away team boards the vessel. The team returns home rather sooner than expected. Turns out just as they were making entry to the frigate, the ship's emergency fuel cell just happened to drift by. I'll take it. Okay, let's try to take advantage of this nebula. We can book it for the quest, and then we can maneuver around a little bit before we hit the exit. But we really have to get away from the Rebel fleet. We lucked out. We really lucked out. All right, you jumped in the middle of a plasma storm. Multiple recently incapacitated ships loom in the shadows, briefly illuminated by the lightning. Um, manually search the wreckage for survivors and equipment. We totally need to do that. Oh no. While the crew is off the ship searching through the wrecks, two hulls crash into each other, breaking the crew's tethers. You have no time to react if someone is knocked away, floating helplessly into the gaseous clouds. Oh, that really sucks. I wish we could have kept the AI. We kept him for one jump. Oh, that's really rough. That's really, really rough. Okay. Let's book it for the quest, because we're not giving up the quest. Stumble across a forward scout of the Rebel fleet. All right. Um, let's power up the laser defense drone. Uh, we want our oxygen. We want all the, the power back in our systems here. Uh, except we need to steal one power for the small bomb. 
And we're going to go after, let's actually send the small bomb over to the weapons immediately. I don't know why I feel like I want to do that, but. Okay, disable the bombs. Target the lasers at the... Sorry, that's the ion cannon I targeted at the weaponry, but that's fine. What's really interesting about the combat of this game is that uh, occasionally the, uh, the laser weaponry, ion cannons, and missiles that get sent over arbitrarily run into drones that happen to be orbiting the ship. Uh, the other ship. Uh, their ship breaks apart and you're relieved to know that you are still one step out of the fleet. Except I still don't have fuel. This is the worst thing ever. Uh, okay, wait. A refugee ship fleeing the rebel advance enters the system. It seems surprised to see you stranded and admits it was following you from afar in the hopes of you leading it to Federation space. While it doesn't have much fuel to spare, it recognizes you are part of the Federation and offers to split its remaining fuel. You guys rock. Thank you. We have to have to get to a place where we can get a lot more fuel. All right, an advanced rebel automated ship remains stationed near a small rebel space station. Sensors indicate it's a storage vessel for military goods. We can attack the automated ship to get the storage cache. We absolutely have to. You're prepared for battle. That's fine. Uh, enemy combat drone. Well, we're going to take out our anti-drone. And we're going to, uh, because that's a serious problem, and we're going to go with uh, Sorrow U2 on that, and the third one. Now, it's using those drones as its only means of attack, but if we target the bomb at its drone facility. Yeah, yeah. All right. Lasers at the drones. Try to keep the critical systems damaged or disabled at all times, and now I can just like let the the two things that have that don't take up resources just cycle and take the ship out. Need fuel. The AI craft sends its mantra again. This is an automated message. Resistance resisting our takeover is pointless. Prepare to die. Can we get some fuel, please. No. Station was either abandoned or stripped clean. It seems to have laid unused for quite some time. You find nothing useful. This is rough. Okay. Oh, two distress. I got a distress I'm never going to be able to get to. Uh, give me fuel, please. You arrive at the beacon at the location given to you by the merchant. You are supposed to deliver missiles to a station here. You find the small guard outpost and deliver. Um, discover that the, p the place has been obliterated by a rebel cruiser just exiting the system. The ammunition comes too late. Okay. I guess we still got a fuel out of that. Get the Distress Beacon. Let's find out what we can do here. The Distress Beacon is coming from a small civilian station. They have been raided repeatedly by ships coming from a nearby pirate stronghold and actually hoped for the rebels to come and save them. Well, maybe the Federation is still good for something. Will you help us? Offer to lead the charge against the pirate hideout. Uh, that is located in a nearby asteroid belt. Offer to stay a while and help repel the next attack. Offer to refill their ammunition supplies uh, through ammo, ammo manufacturer. Uh, or explain that this is none of your business. Um, if I do the ammo manufacturer, that's likely to delay the fleet. But it is the, the specialty answer uh, because I have the ammo manufacturer. Let's do that one. You produce a few warheads with materials that civilians uh, provide. They offer some additional scrap of snacks. And we still have no frickin' fuel. All right. <coughs> Your waiting yields nothing while the fleet surely gets closer. We can conduct some research on the nearby systems. We can assemble missiles, which you don't need to do, or we can continue. What about the onboard science lab? What can we do? The galaxy is full of hidden wonders. Who knows what your team might discover if you let them take a closer look at the area. Your research discovers a high concentration of carbon in a nearby asteroid belt. You could gather some samples, but the drilling will take a lot of time. Um, we're already not going to make the exit. 
So let's have some fun. Now look at these uh, crystal structures. The crew immediately makes it a habit to wear makeshift diamond jewelry everywhere they go until you forbid this kind of nonsense on duty. The data, uh, the data is filed as a mining survey and you load up the samples in your cargo holds. Now I have to get rid of something here. I'm gonna get rid of the luxury goods in, in favor of the deep space gemstones because they're probably gonna fetch a better price. Ugh. Yeah, wait. The Royal Fleet seems to be unable to locate your ship's signature. If only you could get some fuel, you might have a chance to place some distance between you and them. All right, dead in space, you detect a slug ship on a slow approach, of course. They message, we have, ton they have lots of fuel. Perhaps we can help you for the moderate price of a life. We're, we trade fresh, we need fresh mines for our experiments. No, no, we're not doing that. Rebel fleet has caught up to you and you're out of fuel. Could the situation be any worse? Your pilot deftly avoids incoming artillery fire from the surrounding fleet while you sort out exactly what your plan is. One of the many approaching fighters gets into weapons range and your scanners detect a surplus fuel. Perhaps you can still pull this off. <sighs> okay. They don't have drones around our ship, so we're going to go with laser defenses. We're going to... I'm going to send the bombs over to weapons. I'm going to try to use the lasers and uh, dual laser. Yeah, they, they have big guns aimed at us that are going to punch holes in our ship, which is seriously problematic. Okay, let's get the bombs on the shields. Come on. Okay, let's switch the bombs over to here. Let's target their weapons while they're otherwise occupied. Okay, okay, get at least two people in on the shields. We gotta get those shields back up, please. Okay, gotta target the shields. Ooh, took out the engines. You remember this maneuver from the Academy? Did your opponent at some point receive training from the Federation? Okay. Uh, let's get one of... I gotta Actually, I gotta get both of you guys... Oh, God, this is rough. In here. I gotta get all three of you guys in here, I think. You managed to retrieve a few precious fuel capsules. You hurried to jump just before the cruiser can fire a full barrage. I don't want to salvage more. I'm just going to destroy my ship. We jump away immediately. The ships in the distance start firing on you. We have to get the uh, the engines repaired if we're going to do anything. At least one unit. Okay, well, somebody's doing that. Let's get somebody back up to the front to make the jump. Go, 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 go. Jump. This is going to be a real fight. We're all the way over here. We have to get up to the exit. This We got we seriously got hosed by our decision-making process here. We may not actually get out of this. A nearby rebel scout turns to engage, but then makes a call. Makes way for a cruiser that jumps right in front of your ship. You are hailed by a rebel captain. This is Yaris Ground Zero. We have you on our 12. Raise your shields and fight to the death. Fleeing seems to be a suitable option here. Still, taking out on Lake Cruiser would surely throw the Rebel fleet into disarray. So if we can pull this off... Uh, okay, so... You guys have almost finished repairing that. Let's get one of you guys back to shields. Let's uh, get the laser defense guys up and running. We're going to... Take the small bomb and introduce it to the weapons. We're going to fire everything else. Actually, no, we need everything on the shields. We have to get those shields down. Okay, you. Okay. 
We gotta get the shields back online. Yes, yeah, shields are back online. Yeah, we're gonna die here. We are definitely gonna die here. <coughs> I don't think we can bring... We have to actually, you know, kill that. Let's go to the uh, anti-drone anti, def anti uh, defense, because they are kicking our ass a bit here. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's take everything we can to take out their weapons. Let's get the shield back online. Let's get you at the O2. Let's actually get all of the oxygen evacuated from the uh, from the fire areas. And our weapon systems are broken, so we gotta get these guys into the weapons chamber. Yeah, this is where our story ends, I'm afraid. I just, I, I don't have enough resources and crew members to keep this place alive. So we just fell too far behind the rebel fleet. Um, if we had more crew, we could have handled this. No, we're done. It, it was a nice trip. We tried to make a good run of it. But this, I'm sorry, is where our story ends. It's really hard to battle these guys. It's nice, actually. I like what the captain's uh, captain's uh, mod has done. Uh, in order to be able to add a, a, a sort of more richness to the story. I mean, I love the original. Please don't take this the wrong way. Original authors of this game. Uh, I love the base game. It was it was a fantastic roguelike. You pack quite a bit of story and interaction of the sh with the uh, with. Um, you know, the different quest lines and whatever. Uh, lots of Easter eggs. It was great. Uh, and you provided a fantastic uh, framework for other people to go and add stuff like this amazing Tour de Force, which, by the way, took piles of suggestions from all over the place because uh, you can see the list of people who contributed to this to, to create an even richer story, an even richer way to interact with the Rebel fleet, with your crew members, with um, uh, new ships and weapons, lots of different weapons and augments, uh, a sort of a trading facility, which we didn't even really get into. I didn't ever sell any of our trade goods, which probably would have netted us a good profit, made it a list to get weapons and the like. Um, ran out of fuel too much in this. Uh, fell too far behind the Rebel fleet to the point that I would have had to, to jump through three sectors or three jump points of the rebel fleet being entirely on top of us you just can't combat stuff like that you can jump away but you can't fight them um and i don't think i could have missed it but i don't think there was a point there where i had a, um, my ship able to jump away maybe i could have but i would have had to do it twice more so but that was fun that was a lot of fun i will do this again um i didn't expect to be playing this long i expected to die a lot sooner I recommend to everyone who loves FTL, um, get the Captain's Edition. It's a mod. It requires uh, uh, a mod manager to install, or at least it highly recommends. Uh, there's one for FTL specifically. Um, uh, if you just search uh, FTL Captain's Edition, you'll find the various forum posts and the wiki that links to it all um, that can help get you started. It's a great way to go there's um there's a mod and a resource pack for artwork and if you install both of those through the mod manager it just happens um and the mod manager enables you to disable that at will just like a lot of other game specific mod managers i love it um there's piles more to explore here it will take forever to for me to exhaust this on stream uh even if i did it off stream it would take me a long long time so Anyway, thanks very much for watching me playing the Captain's Edition, the user mod, um, the fan mod that sits on top of the fantastic roguelike FTL. I'm going to hit quit here. Uh, I am going to come back immediately with Haven because that's what I really wanted to stream today. Um, and so uh, stay tuned. I'll be back in a few minutes. Thanks for joining me in this stream. I'll see you there. Bye.